Hi everyone, this is Matthew's show with Intro Stats, and today we're continuing our discussion of hypothesis tests. Uh, last time we looked at the test statistics and critical values, and today we're getting to a very famous topic called p-value. It's p-value, so today is all about p-value. We're going to just introduce the ideas of p-value today. Uh, we'll get more into how p-values are calculated in our next video. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, we've been kind of going through hypothesis testing, right? How hypothesis test works. Um, uh, we saw that there was a null hypothesis, uh, a, a, a statement about the population that has an equal to part, and there's an alternative hypothesis, a statement about the population that does not have an equal to part. And um, we, we were kind of looking at, uh, we saw last time that the test statistics sort of measures how far the sample data uh, is from the null hypothesis, right? Is it, is it a significant disagreement? And p-value uh, is sort of another piece of the puzzle. So it kind of goes with the test statistic, but it answers a different question. So let's take a look at a couple things. One thing we talked about a little bit last time was this principle of sampling variability. That's been uh, a constant uh, principle throughout our class is this idea of random chance or sampling variability that random samples are almost always different and they're usually always different than the population. Um, and what that means in terms of a hypothesis test is we can sort of expect our random sample data to almost always disagree with the null hypothesis. It's just always going to be off from what the null hypothesis said almost always. So that's a problem because the null hypothesis might be correct in real life. Maybe that statement about the population is actually correct, but our sample data still disagrees with it, right? Still disagrees with it. And we're like, well, how am I supposed to know if the null hypothesis is right or wrong, right? That's, that's kind of the problem. So sampling variability becomes a real key issue here. And this is where p-value steps in. P-value is a, a number that, the, that we can calculate that sort of helps us with this idea of sam dealing with sampling variability. So here's the key question of, that drives a p-value. Why does my sample data disagree with the null hypothesis? Right? We said in sampling the principle of sampling variability, we know the sample data is going to disagree with the null hypothesis, even if the null hypothesis is right or wrong. Um, so the question not is, does it disagree? The question is, why does it disagree, right? Why does it disagree? Um, and so there's really two answers to this question, right? Why does my sample data disagree? One possibility might be that the null hypothesis is wrong. Uh, maybe that statement about the population in the null hypothesis is actually wrong. And the sample data disagrees with it because it's wrong, okay? That, that's a, definitely a possibility. The other possibility is that the null hypothesis could be correct and the sample data just disagrees with it because of sampling variability or because, because all samples, all random samples are a little bit off. So, it, so there's really sort of two options. It's either a dis, the sample data disagrees with the null hypothesis because of sampling variability, which means the null hypothesis might be correct, or the, uh, sam the sample data disagrees with the null hypothesis because the null hypothesis is really wrong. And that, that idea is really what drives this discussion of p-value, p-value. So when we're trying to figure out this question, right, this, this very, very important question, um, there, the, we calculate something called the p-value. Now again, we've done a lot of p's in stats, and it's a really overused uh, letter. Uh, so. This is different though. This is not uh, the sample proportion or a population proportion or p pooled or some of these other p's that we've looked at in the class or just some general probability. This is capital P value. P value. It's actually something very different. And it's connected to hypothesis testing. Okay? So let's take a look at the definition. Okay, what is p-value? Always start in stats with your vocabulary, your definitions. That's why I've been harping on you on your definitions uh, throughout the class. Just kind of knowing what things are. Being able to explain the idea to someone. That's a lot of what statisticians and data scientists do. We explain data to people. So p-value, the probability of getting the sample data or sample statistic or more extreme by sampling variability 
if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so that's p-value. The probability of getting the sample data or more extreme by sampling variability if the null hypothesis is true. Now that's a very packed definition. It has all kinds of uh, stuff in that definition. Um, and we're not really going to be able to unpack everything in this definition today, right now. But I will point out a few things. First of all, notice that it's a conditional probability. It's a conditional probability. It's based on the premise that the null hypothesis is true. So whenever a computer calculates p-value, they're assuming the null hypothesis is true. And then they're trying to find the probability of getting the sample data or more extreme. So what that kind of refers to is something on any other sample that might even more disagree with the null hypothesis than the sample data you're looking at. Now usually that sample data we're referring to really stems down to usually a sample statistic of some kind. Um, that's why uh, a lot of times you'll see them use the actual sample statistic, like they might use the sample mean or the sample proportion, or they might use a test statistic. So you might see them even use a test statistic as a representation of the sample data. So the probability of getting the sample data by sampling variability. So very important. That's why this is allowing us to answer the key question about sampling variability, right? Why is my data disagreeing with the null hypothesis? Is it sampling variability or is it not? So the key of p-value is you're trying to rule out sampling variability. You're trying to kind of show that sampling variability, it's not sampling variability. It's not random chance. That's not the reason why our sample data is disagreeing with the null hypothesis. So here's kind of the idea here. Think of p-value as a probability, right? Of getting the sample data by sampling variability. So if that probability was really, really low, like almost zero, then... If I had a zero probability that the sample data occurred by sampling variability, if the null was true, then it's sort of not sampling variability, right? That's, that's kind of the idea of it. There's a logic to that, right? A low probability of something happening means it's unlikely to be happening. Like if I have, a, if I have only a 1% chance of my car starting, right, my, it's very unlikely that my car is going to start. So if I have a 1% p-value, a 1% probability that the sample data occurred by sampling variability, it's probably not sampling variability, or it's very unlikely to be sampling variability. That's the idea you want to have in your head, okay? Now there is more to this definition than what, than what we've kind of see on face value, and we'll kind of get into it more and more uh, throughout this, this uh, unit on um, basics of hypothesis tests. So here's the idea. <coughs> if our p-value was really, really low, close to zero, right? That would tell me that it's unlikely to be sampling variability. Okay, it's probably not sampling variability. So let's go back to the key question here. If, if I had a low p-value, right, if I had a low p-value, then that would tell me it's not sampling variability. It's not this one. This is not the reason why my data is disagreeing. But then the only alternative one would be that the null must be wrong, right? You kind of get that? If it's not sampling variability, if this is not the answer to the key question, then it must be this one, right? That's the logic of it. You kind of want to think about, you're kind of ruling this one out. So if I have, if I have a low p-value, right, a low p-value, then it's sort of telling me a low p-value close to zero, right? It means it's not this one, but it, that means it probably is this one. That's why a lot of times when you have a low p-value, they'll say you're going to reject the null hypothesis because you've, you've ruled out sampling variability, so the only other alternative would be that the null is probably wrong. Now, we don't know anything for sure. We're still looking at sample data trying to say something about millions of people in the population. But we'll get to that later that you can make mistakes in this stuff. But the idea of p-value is that idea of ruling out random chance or ruling out sampling variability. Okay, so a low p-value would kind of indicate this one is probably the case. And that's why when we have a low p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so it's not unlikely to be sampling variability, so we can reject 
the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis. We think the null hypothesis is probably not correct. Okay? All right, now, um, notice, again, one of the key things, too, about p-value is it's directly connected to the null hypothesis, not the, not the claim, not the alternative hypothesis. It's always connected to the null and only the null. The p-value only tells you something about the null hypothesis. Because remember, the condition that, the, that when you calculate the p-value is if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so again, it's connected to the null hypothesis and only the null hypothesis. So kind of keep that in your mind as well. Later, we'll see that we can use logic to sort of apply it to the alternative. Like if you said the null was wrong, you're probably saying the alternative might be correct. Or you're supporting it, right? But, um, the, but in general, with p-value, you always think of it as a statement that about... Um, uh, that, it, that the condition is that it's the, it has to have the null hypothesis being true. All right, now, what about a high p-value? What would a high p-value tell us? Oh, a high p-value. So suppose I had a high p-value. So suppose my p-value was high, all right? Well, if that's the case, if you have a high p-value, like even if I just had, by the way, it doesn't take much for a p-value to be high. P-values are supposed to be zero, or really close to zero. Think of it as p-values, you want your p-value to be very, very low, really close to zero, because that's the way you're going to rule out sampling variability. If you get a higher p-value, like even if it's a, I don't know, 20% p-value, that's considered a high p-value. That means it could be just sampling variability. I'd have a 20% probability that the sample data just occurred by sampling variability if the null was true. So a high p-value, not, not close to zero, would tell me that it could be sampling variability. Now it's just a 20% probability, so it doesn't guarantee it is sampling variability, but what it tells me is it could be, okay? So a high p-value tells me it could be sampling variability. It could be sampling variability. So the sampling variability, this one, it could be the answer to the question of why does